Let's look, I have a shawl to talk about today, and it's pretty. Everybody, it's me, Margaret. I'm a Mississippian transplanted to Atlanta, Georgia, where I sheepishly share things I love with you. And today I'm loving this shawl. This is the shawl we've been waiting for. Erin, give me yarn 418. It's called Down the Rabbit Hole Crochet Shawl. I love the stitch pattern on it. Isn't it pretty? Now, I did this in three separate colors of yarn. It was Sheepish, Bernat Sheepish, which is a 70% acrylic, 30% wool, and that wool makes it block out so nicely so that the stitch definition is nice and clear, which I love. Um, I'll put a link to the project, my project page, a Ravelry for this, and you can see whatever the colors are that I use because I can't recall at this moment in case you're interested for, about that. But the pattern has worked from this part right here, then next this, and it goes down to where it's widening as you go like this. Now that's really good because what happens is the hard part is right here where you're learning the stitch pattern and then it locks into your brain after that and you sit back and you can just go to town and knock this thing out. I just love it. She's designed it for worsted weight or DK weight, but with the instructions she shows you how you could easily make it larger or smaller by adding or decreasing rows. So you could really use any weight yarn you want to on that. Now she used a Karen Cakes on it and it turned out pretty. Um, I think she also did a Red Heart Unforgettable. You can check the pictures, the project pictures for it to see how all these things work out. I used three separate colors and basically what I did was two repeat rows in one color to repeat one rows in one color and I went down like that until I got to the end and then I just did this the reason being is because I am 5'2 and I wanted mine to be a little bit shorter than the basic instructions gave and I'll put some pictures up of my, my model Matilda wearing this so you can see it hangs almost to the tip edge of my big winter coat. So it came out a great size for me. I really, really like it. And I love the color combo. Looks like fire, doesn't it? Came out great, if I do say so myself. So that's on sale now in Ravelry. I'll put a link to the this pattern in the description box below, and you too can have a great fun shawl called Down the Rabbit Hole. Some weeks are better than others when it comes to having free time for yarn. And I was asked this question recently. Stephanie Hartsock asked me, I see most of your knitting and your crochet and knitting is for charity. Just wondering, how many hours a day or week do you think you dedicate to charity work? I love to make things for charity and I find myself having to force myself to get to my housework and day job done first. Boy, don't we understand that. That is such a good question. So first of all, I began by pointing out that most of what I do is for charity. I can only wear so much. But I love to knit and crochet, so I just keep doing it. Um, my daughter will ask for things every now and then, and the men in my family don't really wear knitwear. Now that I've started knitting socks, those will be for me, but about everything else I give away. So, the majority of my yarn time is charity related. How many hours depends on what I have to do that week. I got several hats done for this video over about 10 days, roughly 45 minutes a hat. Uh, that was last video, by the way. This week, I was out of the house a lot with some volunteer responsibility in Thomas's baseball games, so very little got done. Next week looks no better, and that, that would be the week I'm in right now. Video editing takes hours and hours, but that's something else I also enjoy. So, to answer your question, I don't know. <laughs> Not very helpful, huh? <laughs> now, the past couple of weeks were pretty crazy because I'm the 10th grade coordinator at Thomas's school, and I serve on various committees. And these past couple of weeks were involved in getting ready for the big teacher appreciation. This is not just teachers, it's anybody who is involved in the life of our kids for the most part. And we do this very fancy luncheon, there were two of them, fancy luncheons, trying to make it as formal as possible even though dress was not formal, trying to make it really special so that 
they can feel appreciated. And it took a lot of time, but it was really, really worth it. So I'll be really beat and then come home and that's a perfect time for scrap hats. I'm working off of only one light today because these lights back here, I don't know if you can see them, this is a light right here, are on my tutorial station. We'll talk about that in a minute. But that's why the light is so harsh because I don't have any fill lights going on. But this was some more of that brunette sheepish. I can't remember the colors off the top of my head, but this is that hat that everybody seems to be interested in these days. I don't have a pattern for it, but I can put one together. It's very simple. Uh, a tutorial was requested. Again, be happy to do that. But as I mentioned before, I got a tutorial going right now. I'm in the middle of the Better Late Than Never beanie. And uh, that is a, a pattern by Kathy North. And I had to get permission from her to do that. So I want to give this my full attention before we move on to something else. But I'll be happy to do this. It's, it's super simple. You can knock it out in no time. Basically what it is is a half double crochet beanie and this is camel stitch. So there you go. If you already know those stitches, you could probably figure out how to do it yourself. But for those who asked, I'll be happy to put something together for you. And here's another version of that hat, that same hat. Basically my formula for this is to do a half double crochet beanie down to right where the ears go because camel stitch is a thicker, more squishy, dense, I guess you'd say, uh, stitch, and it gives added warmth at the ears, which is always a bonus, right? So, yeah, we'll talk about that in the future. And here's an oldie but a goodie. This is called the Brain Waves Beanie. This is a pattern by Liz McQueen of Play and Hooky Designs. Now, most of her patterns are paid for patterns, but this one is free. It's an oldie but a goodie, like I said. Pretty classic, fun to wear, both men and women like it. You, you just can't beat it. Very simple, easily, uh, easily increased because you don't bother with the waves through the increases. The waves don't begin until you stop the increases. And all the waves are just a combination of different size stitches, single, half double, and double crochet. And then they're separated with a one row of plain single crochet. Very, very simple, but you do have to pay attention to make sure you get the pattern right. But again, Play and Hooky Designs by Liz McQueen. The Brain Waves Beanie. Another time consuming task these days is making my own cat food. Poor Smitty has several ailments and he's starving, but he's just picking at his food. He loves chicken, so I cooked a bunch of thighs in the pressure cooker and ground them up. Once the taste tester's approved, and I don't know where Cozy was and why she wasn't in on the action, I then put them in pet food containers that I have recycled for crafting a while back. Some are in the fridge, some are in the freezer, and he seems pretty happy. And of course it's baseball season. Hey, good cut, good cut. <laughs> Watch my head. Get down, get down, get down, get down, get down, get down, get down. That's good, that's good. Hey, nice stroke, nice stroke. Here we go, here we go now. Now batting for the Eagles. See how his right wrist is wrapped? He does have to have surgery on that benign cyst. It's minor, but we still have to have it done. I'm also hosting a brunch and bubbly for a bride on April 1st, so I got out the silhouette machine and figured out how to use the pin attachment. That was cool. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are being chauffeured by Thomas and we are now going to execute some serpentine turns. Never have determined if that's serpentine or serpentine. Serpentine. That's what he looks like driving. Same as he looks eating. No, eating I'd have my mouth open. Alright, here we go. When are we gonna do them? Right here. Okay. Nicely done. 
we, we were getting car sick through the first ones as we jerked left and right and front and back and now we're so smooth and we played drive through mom got out and stood right over here and he paid his money and then he drove to the next window and he got, a burger got, from his, good burger. got his burger from good burger and we're doing great right yeah sure Ta-da! There he is. And there's his passenger back there who doesn't know what's going on. Last week I opened up a wonderful bath bomb that was included in my February Nip Crate box. And I'm here to report that I loved it. But... So here's one problem with the bath bomb. These tiny little leaves get stuck all over your tub. And it gets stuck on you too. So when I stood up, I have this little plastic rinsing cup I keep over there and I stood up and rinsed my leaves off of me. So now I'm going to fill up my little rinsing cup with some very hot water and just rinse this out and I'll worry about cleaning it tomorrow. I didn't mention this while filming, but do you see a light lavender tint to some of the uh, walls of the tub? That was this nice oily emollient it felt wonderful it smelled wonderful but it was tinted lavender and it did leave a big film all over the tub so i was nice and relaxed and did not want to clean my tub afterwards <laughs> so i saved that task for the next day i'm going to sound like a commercial for a minute but have you tried mcdonald's coffee tucker and i love it we think it's really good and the best part is you pay your dollar seven and you leave. I mean, you don't have to tip. What is with this tipping at counter service restaurants? I, I, I don't get it. If I go to a real restaurant and I sit down, I am paying to have someone prepare my food. I tip the people who are giving me the service, the special service, bringing my food to me, refilling my glass, that sort of thing. I don't tip the chef to prepare my food. I mean, what am I going to do? Can, I am paying for my coffee. I don't have the option to climb over the counter and go fix it for myself. So, what, why am I tipping? Why am I tipping? Now, because I've been doing videos long enough, I know there's going to be somebody that's going to ask me, Margaret, will you explain your tutorial setup right here? <laughs> Well, I have. That's a separate tutorial itself. Very simple with some items that you may have lying around the house, like these paper towel rolls like this. This particular tutorial, I wanted to get a little higher, so I added some stuff, but I'll link that tutorial in the description box below. I've got to get some socks on the needles. That's my next uh, hopeful goal for this week. I put in all that effort to get it to fit my foot just right and I've practiced that fish lips kiss heel and I'm going to forget everything I learned if I don't hurry up and get another pair on the needles. For this week's treasure chest I want to talk about ways to make your YouTube viewing experience better. Now it's long been known that the best way to watch YouTube would be on a computer because you've got so many more features like being able to speed up or slow down just to name a few. But now YouTube has added even more functionality to their mobile devices. And I know just from looking at my demographics, my analytics on YouTube, that I have a lot of people who do watch on some sort of mobile device, being your phone or being your, pad, your iPad or whatever, your tablet of some sort. Note that watching through your TV or game console is possible, but YouTube hasn't released any enhancements for those yet. So the good news is that YouTube is aware of this and they're trying to enhance your viewing experience. So I want to show you a few shortcuts for that. I watch way more YouTube than I do TV and I'm not alone. Here's a recent article from the Wall Street Journal and Fortune magazine. Of course, I watch yarn related videos, but other how-to videos as well. I also watch a lot of non-craft related bloggers. Internet tainers like Rhett and Link of Good Mythical Morning. Our whole family loves these guys. And old TV shows that can still crack me up and some that never aired on American TV. It's free. It's great. So let's make the most of it.
These new end screens are the first things I want to bring to your attention. Once upon a time, it was an arduous editing process to create end screens, and if you made them clickable, they only worked on computers. With these new screens, it's easier for YouTubers to implement, and they work on phones and tablets. As a viewer, I like them because they lead me to other things that I may want to see. And as a YouTuber, I can link you to something I talked about or, and I like this one, let YouTube suggest something else you may be interested in. For a while now, YouTube has been offering information cards to video creators. We can put any link to any video we want to reference to share more information with you. Just click or tap when they pop up, or at any time in the video for that matter. You don't see it? Just mouse over or tap the screen. Poof! There it is. Is somebody talking too slow for you? Speed them up! On a computer, click the gear icon and choose your speed. I know. Now, at least get my son size 13. <laughs> he doesn't like them, so uh, we're going to have to find a new home for them. But you can also slow them down. Note that the slowest speed does not give you audio. You can also accomplish this with keyboard shortcuts, and I'll include a link to those in the description box below. Now, we don't have this ability on mobile devices yet. But here on the current iOS screen, we can double tap on the right to jump ahead 10 seconds, and we can double tap on the left to jump back 10 seconds. Comment and read the comments. There's a wealth of information there, especially in how-to videos where people like to share their related tips. Word on the street has it that YouTube is working on a Facebook-like interface where you can share your own pictures, etc. Who knows if that'll come to fruition, but I like the idea. And don't forget to check the description box. That's YouTube 101. YouTubers use this for show notes and contact information. Some YouTubers will send you someplace else for links and show notes, but at least you'll have that information if you're willing to take those extra steps. Here is another wonderful thing for the treasure chest. Ann Bud, who is a knitting teacher, author, designer, she's the one who wrote the book about socks that I love so much that Jen, Crafty Jen, had sent me. And this is a gauge ruler that she's developed, and I absolutely love it. It really takes the question out of figuring out what your gauge is. Basically, the way it works is that you line up these little V's with your stitching on your work, and then she tells you what your gauge is right below it. Now, another handy thing is that she has both white and black patterns here, so that would help depending on what yarn you're using. See, let's see if I can show you. See, if you're using a light color yarn, then of course you would use the, the dark marks, and if you're using a dark color yarn, you use the light marks. So let's test it out. I have a little hat here, and you know, ideally you want to use a flat swatch, but I don't have that handy, so you're going to have to work with me here. So basically what we do is we line up our stitches with the patterning on the ruler. Um, we make it as flat as possible. That doesn't appear to line up. Can't find a flat spot. Always use your flat gauge. Okay, this looks really good. Okay, I have it lining up with each stitch across and even each stitch down. And that's indicating that I've got 5.5 stitches per inch. So that's my gauge. Pretty cool, huh? Now I had a hard time finding this thing. When I, I forget where I saw it, but then I had difficulty locating where to buy it. But I did find it from Friends in Fiber, which is an Etsy store. So it's friendsinfiber.etsy.com. And the price was $5 with $1.25 shipping and handling. So it was $6.25 for a pretty handy dandy gadget. So I guess that's all I've got for today. So I will see you hopefully next week. Talk soon. Bye. You want to say goodbye? No.
Thank you.